Okay, so let's take a look at a skeletal muscle fiber. So if we go to this picture here, um, yeah, so this picture here, this is showing a single skeletal muscle fiber. Now, pretty much all these parts within a cell have been renamed on a skeletal muscle. Don't ask me why, I wasn't a part of the naming process. Anyway, so the first is called the sarcolemma. So this is a sarcolemma. The sarcolemma is a muscle cell's plasma membrane. So if we break this down, sarco means flesh, lemma means covering. Okay, so flesh covering. So that's the sarcolemma. Now, here's what's interesting is that this, there's these structures, I don't know why that moves on me, but there's these structures right here, and these are called T-tubules. So transverse or T-tubules, these are parts of the sarcolemma that penetrate into the cell, all right? And they're gonna be important in muscle contraction. Next is the uh, sarcolemma. So the sarcolemma is all this stuff here on the middle uh, is the sarcolemma. So this is a muscle cell cytoplasm uh, is the sarcolemma. It contains thousands of mitochondria, which they're only showing a few, but there's lots and lots of mitochondria in here. All right. It also contains an abundance of glycogen. So if you remember, glycogen is a storage form of glucose. So glucose, the main molecule our cells use for energy. So it's energy storage is what the glycogen is. It also contains myofibrils. So each one of these alternating green and purple things right here, uh, those are myofibrils. So this is showing like one, two, three, four, five myofibrils within the cell. There's lots and lots more of these. All right. It also contains myoglobin. Now, myoglobin is a protein that stores oxygen in muscle cells, okay? So it's going to be very important. So we'll talk about myoglobin later on. Now, this yellow stuff that we see here, that is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So this is a muscle cell smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And they lie on, e and it lies on either side of the T-tubules there, okay? So you can see it there. Now, what that does, that um, uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum does, is it stores calcium ions. Once again, calcium ions are going to be very important in, when we talk about muscle contraction here in a little bit. Okay, so uh, this picture here shows a, uh, a single muscle fiber. This is showing a myofibril sticking out. And then this picture here is showing the two types of filaments that are found in a myofibril. So let's go to uh, this picture here. So you can see that single uh, myofibril sticking out. The myofibrils, these are the contractile fibers within muscle cells. And there's two main myofilaments, filaments up here. Uh, one are called the myosin myofilaments, which are shown here in green, shown here in green, and this is shown here in green. Right, those are the my, my, uh, myosin myofilaments. These are made of myosin protein. So this is a myosin protein right there. And it's kind of got this golf club shape structure to it. Okay, so there's the head of the, of the myosin. Next is the actin myofilament. So you can see this is the actin myofilament. This purple guy right there is the actin myofilament. Why are you not moving back? So there's the actin myofilament. And then this is the actin myofilament as well. Okay, now this is primarily made of actin proteins, which are these ball-shaped structures here. Okay, now each actin protein has, you see these little yellow dots on there, those little yellow dots are what we call the active site. That's where the head of the myosin can bind to the, uh, uh, bind to the actin protein. Okay, so this thing will bind onto there. And this, you can kind of see, it kind of looks like they're already bound there. Okay, now, also on that actomyofilament, you can see a couple other things. So this right here is a protein called tropomyosin, and this is a protein called troponin, and these are connected to each other. Now, tropomyosin blocks that active site on the actin. So meaning that the head of the myosin cannot bind to the actin when the tropomyosin is in the way, all right? Attached to the tropo tropomyosin is troponin. And so this is why we call this the troponin-tropomyosin complex. Now, what troponin does is it binds to calcium ions that are released by the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And we'll get to that when we talk about muscle contraction. Now let's take a look at what makes those striations. So remember, those striations are these alternating dark and light lines that we see in skeletal muscle, all right? 
So these darker bands that we see right here, these are called the A bands. And wherever we have myosin is where we have those A bands. So there's an A in dark, okay? So next are the I bands. So that's these lighter bands here are the I bands, all right? So we look down here, you can see that it says I band right there. And what you can see there is there's no myosin in the I band. So wherever we have myosin, that's an A band. Wherever we do not have myosin is the I band. So there's an I in light, so just to help you remember that. Within the I band, you're seeing the zigzag line here, and it's actually uh, three dimensional. It's a disc shaped structure, and this is known as the Z disc, okay? And so all the actin myofilaments attach to the Z disc. We see that over here as well. The myosin does not attach to the Z disc, all right? So the last thing in here is a sarcomere. So this, so uh, a sarcomere is the distance between one Z disc and another Z disc. So that's one sarcomere there. Here's the Z-disc, there's the Z-disc, there is another sarcomere there, okay? So the sarcomere is a structural and functional unit of a myofibril, all right? So up here, that's trying to show Z-disc there, Z-disc there, Z-disc there, Z-disc there. So this is one sarcomere, there's another sarcomere, there's another sarcomere, there's another sarcomere. So a myofibril is just one sarcomere after the next, okay? And so that's the structural unit of the myofibril. Why it's a functional unit is because when we're going to look at muscle contraction, which is the, what we're going to do next, is that all we have to do is see what takes place within one of these sarcomeres, and that's going to take place through the entire myofibril, which is going to take place through the entire muscle cell, which takes place through the entire muscle. And that's where we're going to look at in contraction.